here in County Clare, we are blessed with the gift of great natural beauty. But the real gift is the strength, innovation and tenacity of our people. In 1898, the Local Government Act gave the people of Clare the first real opportunity for self-governance. Clare County Council met for the first time at Innes Courthouse. The council has worked for the people of Clare, giving voice to the people of Clare through the elected members of Clare County Council. This book charts this relationship, this social contract, and how it evolved during the course of the 20th century. Between 1276 and 1318, the Norman family of de Clare attempted to conquer the truncated Kingdom of Thomond and subdue the O'Brien clan, but were heavily defeated at the Battle of Dysart on the 10th of May 1318. After this decisive victory, Gaelic Thomond was left in comparative peace by the English crown for 200 years. In 1569, Queen Elizabeth I oversaw the sharing of Thomond of the county. The chosen name was Clare. County Clare was established 450 years ago, in February of 1570, at a court of English law held here in the sacristy of the Franciscan Monastery here behind me. The Grand Jury of County Clare was also established at this time. It would go on to hold assize courts and also establish a courthouse and a jail here in Ennis. I'm very proud and very honoured to be the Mayor of County Clare. As you can see from this chain of office, this goes back to 1899 and only four women got to wear this. The O'Briens were one of the most powerful, wily, uh, successful and sometimes ruthless families in Ireland in early modern times. One of the most powerful of the family was Donna O'Brien. He is one of the creators of modern Clare, transforming it from a Gaelic society to what he would have regarded as a modern English society. The O'Briens effectively were the major family of Clare for nearly a thousand years. As Matthew's already explained, Donna O'Brien, the fourth Earl of Thomond, is one of the most important political figures in the history of County Clare. From the early stages of his tenure, Dunn was keen to demonstrate his loyalty to the court of Elizabeth I. In 1588, he was given an excellent opportunity to demonstrate this loyalty when two vessels of the Spanish Armada ran aground in West Clare. And over the course of the subsequent days, agents of Dunn viciously prosecuted the survivors from those two vessels and really demonstrated his total fealty to Elizabeth's court. It's in this room, in the north solar of Bunratty Castle, Donna's own private apartments, that he planned and schemed the Anglicisation of County Clare, something that had been attempted but unsuccessful since the establishment of County Clare in 1570.
This magnificent building was built in 1850 and it replaced the old Ennis Courthouse which was located in O'Connell Square. Initially, in addition to housing the judicial courts, the courthouse was home to the Clare Grand Jury, the predecessor of Clare County Council. The Grand Jury was a board of 20 jurors appointed annually by the Clare County Sheriff. Unlike the County Council, the Grand Jury was a largely unrepresentative local government structure. It was not democratically elected and consisted mainly of wealthy landowners and members of the ascendancy class. However, for the most part, it was concerned with the conduct of the courts and the maintenance of law and order. This is Scariff Workhouse. It opened in May 1842. Just a mere three years later, the Clare Poor Law Unions faced the ultimate test in the Great Famine. Beset by corruption and incompetence, the Clare Unions virtually collapsed under the pressure of the famine. This failure had a catastrophic effect on County Clare's population, which took a century to recover. In Clare, the failure of the poor law resulted in an institutional mistrust of unrepresentative local government for the rest of the 19th century. This system of local government was entirely changed when the Local Government Ireland Act was passed in 1898, opening up the ballot to a wide range of Clare society, rich and poor. And in 1899, the first democratically elected members of the council met for the first time on the 23rd of April in the Grand Jury Room on the first floor of this building here behind me. Through the 19th century, Clare people were at the vanguard of the Irish struggle for self-determination and the right to chart their own course through democracy and the ballot box. And their efforts were not in vain. In June 1920, the elected members of Clare County Council became the first local authority in Ireland to pass a resolution acknowledging the authority of the Provisional Government of Dáil Éireann as the duly appointed Government of the Irish people. In doing so, the elected members placed County Clare at the centre of the Irish struggle for self-determination. In 1920, as the War of Independence raged across the country, Clare County Council, being made up of primarily Sinn Féin members, itself became an illegal organisation. And as a result of this, their normal meeting place at Ennis Courthouse was unavailable to them. So it meant that they had to rely on some novel venues to carry out their business. One meeting was held in the County Mental Hospital. Another was held in a derelict house, allegedly here in Tyreda in Tulla in County Clare. Lieutenant General Michael Brennan, then Cahirlock of Clare County Council, left a wonderful account describing the scene. The next meeting was held in an empty house in the middle of a crag, a couple of miles outside the town of Ennis. And in order that people may gain some idea of her extraordinary difficulties, there was no furniture in the house except one very ramshackle table and an alleged stool which I as chairman was allowed to occupy. The assistant secretary of the county council had to sit in a basket turned upside down and the representative of the Clare champion had to sit on the floor and take his notes from there. Bags filled with hay placed here and there on the floor provided scant accommodation for the other members of the council. The electric light consisted of two candles stuck in empty bottles the attendants included a flying column, the members of which occupied every possible vantage point with their rifles, covering every approach by which the enemy could possibly come.
By the mid-1920s, following the establishment of the Irish Free State, Clare County Council had an essential role in rebuilding County Clare's infrastructure and salving the social wounds following a decade of conflict. Across roads, sanitary services, healthcare and housing, there was much work to be done. From 1883 onwards, Clare local authorities transformed the housing situation in County Clare. First, the Boards of Guardians, then the Rural District Councils, then the Board of Health, and since 1942, the County Council, plus of course the Town Councils, have transformed the county by building thousands of social houses. The results of this are, are there for all to see. In 1971, over 40% of the houses in Ennis had been provided by the local authorities. Over the past 150 years, local government has transformed housing in County Clare, one of its proudest achievements. In the early 1960s, just 60% of County Clare's population had access to piped water in their homes. In 1965, Clare County Council embarked on one of the most ambitious infrastructural projects ever carried out in County Clare, here at Dulac Lake in West Clare. It was a project of a vast scale, harnessing almost 350 acres of lake water. The idea was to harness the 315 acres of lake water pump it upstream to a treatment plant and then distribute it through a network of pipework all across West Clare. The project ultimately brought piped water to almost 30% of the county's population across 40% of its landmass. Later phases of the project facilitated the provision of fresh water to the generating station at Money Point down in the Shannon Estuary. For the next 100 years, Ennis Courthouse was a central point in the governance of County Clare. In addition to being the meeting place for the elected members, it served as the administrative and technical headquarters for many of the council's functions until the building was finally vacated by the council in 1999. In fact, the staff moved out in 1986, but the county council continued to hold its meetings in the original council chamber until 1999. For decades, Council staff climbed these steps on their way to work in good times and bad, in peacetime and in times of conflict. Indeed, it was on these very steps that the Cure brothers took the iconic photograph of a victorious Eamon de Valera following his election in the 1917 by-election. These limestone steps and ionic portico, if they could only speak, they could tell many tales and I invite you to join us in exploring these stories in this publication, The Story of Clare and Its People. In 1970, Clare County Council moved its administrative and technical operations to a new building, Oris Cundé on Clare, on the new road. Over the subsequent decades, the council became increasingly responsible for a wide range of services, such as planning, environmental services, emergency services, civil defence, road design and economic, tourism, cultural and community development. By the early 2000s, the council had become one of the county's largest employers and had outgrown the original Aris Cundé and Clare building. In 2008, Clare County Council opened the new Aris Cundé and Clare, a modern purpose-built hub for the delivery of local government services to the people of Clare. Despite the modern building, like the county motto, Dilish Dar Nairacht, Aris Kunde and Clare proudly houses many treasures of the past stories of County Clare's local government journey. This is a wonderful new publication for all to enjoy. It's going to have popular appeal. It's also going to be an important scholarly work for people to refer to. This is a story of us. This is a story of who we are and how we got there. On behalf of the elected members and staff of Clare County Council, I invite you all to join us in this journey of self-discovery.